All three Silver Squeeze events in 2021 have failed. Why is that? There has never been a more ardent advertising campaign to buy silver than in 2020 and 2021. So why aren't we seeing higher prices? The price of silver still languishes in the mid $20 range with very little movement in price in either direction. What's going on? In this video, I'll explain what needs to happen for the price of silver to rise and more coming up. Hey everyone, welcome to Campbell's Coins. This is a tough topic for me because on one hand, I want the Silver Squeeze movement to succeed, but on the other hand, I recognize the forces out there determined to keep the price of silver down. I'll go into detail about this in a few minutes. I called this back in May before the, sec before the second Silver Squeeze on May 4th. The Silver Squeeze will not work. Why is that? I feel people might get butthurt thinking I don't support the Silver Squeeze movement simply because I'm calling its failure. I guess I'm being too much of a Debbie Downer. That couldn't be further from the truth though. I'm one of the biggest supporters of the Silver Movement. However, I'm also a realist. And I look at the numbers instead of relying on sentiment. When I see people calling for a Silver Squeeze, I understand that they fall into two camps. Those who want the price to rise because they are Silver Stackers, and those who want to sell silver. The first silver squeeze happened in 2021. The spot price rose about $3, but subsided quickly, while the premium rose impressively higher and stayed that way for a good part of the year. At this point, there was a lot of energy in the air and people thought, this is it. This is when silver spot price would explode. Except that didn't happen. There were certainly a lot of silver buyers in the marketplace and there were shipping delays, but not much else. In May 2021, we had another silver squeeze movement. The spot price didn't do a whole lot, but it was after this event we started to see premiums for silver start their decline, a very slow deflation. Still up there in my eyes, especially for specific products, but I'm seeing premiums come down about 50 cents to a dollar so far. And now, over Independence Day weekend, the silver apes called for another silver squeeze, and would you look at that? nothing happened to silver spot price. Premiums didn't really increase. Instead, I see them still on a slow decline. I don't see any shipping delays out there on any bullion dealer's website. In fact, most silver brands and sizes are in stock. Go to any online bullion dealer's website and you'll see plenty of silver in stock. A lot of people were calling out the Perth Mint saying that they were out of silver. I told you back then, those people were wrong. The Perth Mint has Plenty of silver, just not in a sellable form. It takes time to melt down 1,000 ounce bars into silver shot and then create sheets of silver to stamp out silver blanks to then make into coins. The Perth Mint released multiple statements confirming they do have the silver and it takes time to convert it. The president of the Perth Mint was also on Kitco News defending these statements. We are seeing higher silver prices compared to spot price but I'm not seeing shortages of silver. Sure, certain items might be out of stock, but this is the conversion process of getting those thousand ounce bars into a form most of the public can purchase and store. After three failed silver squeeze movements, sooner or later, you have to ask yourself, what's going on? Who really gains from a silver squeeze movement? That's really a multifaceted answer. To find out what's going on, we have to check out a few things. The first is the amount of silver mined in a given year, preferably silver mined in the previous year. You can find all this info on Silver Institute's website. And here we can see the number of ounces of silver mined each year and how much silver is allocated to each sector. The total production of silver in 2020 was 976 million ounces, nearly 1 billion. The total demand for that year was 896 million ounces. That means demand didn't exceed yearly supply. We had an 80.1 million ounce surplus. What about 2021? Wall Street Silver thinks if everyone buys 100 ounces, it will short squeeze silver? How many people do you think are participating? If 10 million people bought all 100 ounces of silver, 
it would exceed the yearly world production. And of course, at that point, silver price would go through the roof because there's just not that much silver allocated for investment grade silver. Are there 10 million silver stackers out there? No. I know what you're going to say. The whole point of the movement is to educate and bring more people on board to buy silver. Yeah, I get it. But we aren't seeing that in the numbers. Hence why I say the silver squeeze movement is a failure. The Hunt brothers in the 1980s cornered the market owning about 80 million ounces of silver. According to reports, this was one third of the world's silver supply at the time. That amount is equivalent to the surplus of silver for 2020, about 10% of the total supply. 2021 has seen a dramatic increase in demand, but it still isn't exceeding supply. As we can see here, there's 1 billion 56 million ounces of total supply. And so far for 2021, there's 1 billion 33 million ounces of demand. We are seven months into the year and there is still 23.3 million ounces of surplus. I don't know how big the silver squeeze movement is, but let's say that there's 50,000 people, a bit high in my eyes, but just hear me out. Just to eat up the surplus for 2021, all 50,000 people would have to buy 460 ounces of silver. That's a lot of silver, and you still wouldn't corner anything. Everything is already allocated to, his, to its designated sector. Now, you can claim that these numbers on Silver Institute's website are wrong. You can say they are lying, but the first thing I always come back to is, if there is a true silver shortage, why aren't we seeing severe shortages of silver in the marketplace? I'm not saying there aren't more silver buyers than ever before. I'm saying it's not enough to break the system. If you want to break the silver system, a lot more silver needs to be purchased. We would have to pressure the allocated amounts in the other sectors to affect supply and pricing. The demand for silver today is no less than at the end of 2015. Just look right here. 1 billion 33 million ounces. 2015, 1 billion 70 million ounces. That's the highest that this goes back to 2012, but that's the highest so far. It has de it has declined as you can see here. Trust me, I want the price of silver to skyrocket. I know this metal will be a strategic resource in the next decade. I have done multiple videos explaining why silver is vitally important for the survival of the human race and how we will run out of obtainable silver in the next decade. The production of silver year after year is falling while the demand for this will increase dramatically. Many countries are moving towards green energy and the only way to that future is with silver. Silver is an extremely important metal, but many companies benefit from a low silver price. It's estimated that Tesla cars use a kilo of silver per car. This right here is a kilo, and while it seems small, that is a lot of silver for each Tesla vehicle. Now, if you can multiply that by the number of electric car companies coming out, or the number of car companies that are switching over to electric, and you can see how that will suck up more and more silver in the world. And Tesla won't confirm how much silver they use in each of their cars. Other tech companies won't mention how much silver they use in computers and phones, etc., because they are deathly afraid of announcing these numbers because it would trigger massive silver purchasing and demand. In the meantime, we have to ask ourselves who's really pushing the silver squeeze movement and who really benefits from it. Aside from the bullion dealers, I would say that the banks and the companies that are using silver are the real winners here. They are the ones betting against us. They short silver over and over and over again and have been winning nonstop this year. They are stamping out the silver price with their massive silver short positions. I wouldn't be surprised if the companies that use silver are helping them do so. I would love nothing more than to see these banks either collapse or for them to be bailed out. Either way, it shows people how broken the system truly is. The government allows individuals to fail. It doesn't step in to protect a generational farming family from losing their land, but has no problem throwing tens to hundreds of billions at banks just to keep them from failing. And to build on that, I'm not entirely sure that the bullion dealers are, you know, innocent in all this. 
They know exactly what's going on. They know everything I'm telling you. They know that banks are shorting silver on a massive scale, suppressing its price, but they're calling on you to buy a tiny amount of silver, comparatively speaking, to overthrow them. They are counting on you not to know this information because if you knew 100 million ounces of silver needed to be purchased to start making waves, it might get you to stop buying silver at inflated prices. In order for us to reach 100 million ounces, which is 10% of the total supply, all 50,000 people that I mentioned earlier would need to buy 2,000 ounces of silver. I'm willing to bet that most are buying an average of 10 ounces of silver maybe a month. Certainly not 2,000 ounces of silver a year. What the silver squeeze movement needs to succeed is a couple of billionaires like the Hunt brothers to come in and corner the market. Someone like Elon Musk. The little fish are putting a slight pressure on silver demand, but we need some whales to break the system. I truly believe that the silver squeeze movement is a failure and that there are so many factors in place to keep the price of silver down. You have companies that want a low silver price to continue producing products at a cheap price. Imagine if the price of silver rose to $50 an ounce. That makes Tesla cars a whole lot more expensive, electric cars. It may not really matter for cell phones because they use like a tenth of an ounce of silver and what's like a $50 increase, it's like to $5 or maybe $10. But on a larger scale, solar panels, batteries, cars, everything would increase in price. And of course the banks are making out on this because they're betting that the price will stay low and go lower. And so they're betting against us. What do you think is going on with the silver squeeze movements? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in other topics like this one, check out the other videos I have on my channel discussing these metals and how they can help you preserve and protect your wealth. If you made it this far in the video, you guys and gals are my super stackers and collectors, and I appreciate you. Thank you all for watching. This is Campbell's Coins, and that is my two cents.